Okay, thanks. Got it. Okay, great. Thanks, Ted. Thank you for everybody's time. It's 8 p.m. here already. It's getting dark now. Winter is still quite a bit away, but we starting to feel a little bit of a nip in the air, but we still got about another six weeks to two months before it properly, you know, before winter actually arrives. Um, I love this picture of Namibia at the moment. Um, we have some really exciting rains, especially early February, mid-February, we've had the most magnificent rainy season. So you'll actually see dead flay with some water pants everywhere. So you have these most magnificent pictures of the dunes reflecting um, in these pants. So it's a really cool time to come to Namibia. And I think that's what we want to emphasize on. Uh, I think for most countries now, travel restrictions have been pretty much lifted. And it seems unlikely that more people are going to panic and do this terrible Omicron injustice that you everybody did to Southern Africa, um, which is just a missed opportunity for so many bleak travelers. I mean, it, you know, it was hard for African tourism, but it was also hard for travelers who had big plans and then were prevented from coming to Southern Africa for no obvious reason. But we certainly have bounced back. It's looking really exciting for 2022. We encourage everybody that if the time is now, it's now. Next year rates will increase, you know, things will get busy. And we always felt that Namibia is a destination you want to visit when there are no tourists around or out of the normal busy season. So, you know, if any, and I know a lot of you are Africa and Namibia fans, honoring Namibians, you know Namibia, and a lot of you that haven't been here but appreciate what we offer. Um, so I'm really trying to focus on what, why come to Namibia and how to convince your guests to come to Namibia now and not wait. Don't wait. I really don't wait. Um, we're already um, facing some availability challenges. April has been surprisingly busy and August. Um, August is a popular family holiday this time. So it's been, you know, um, we, we make space. We always make a plan, but it's certainly um, people are starting to hear about this is a place to come. And why? For a lot of you that know, second least densely populated country in the world. This is where we get away from everything. This webinar is dedicated to the great outdoors, the great open spaces, to be able to breathe um, without a mask, without restrictions, to go around without being paranoid about it. I wash my hands 500 times today. You have more worries about the dust everywhere than you have about viruses in this country. Um, social distancing is so natural to the Namibian way of life, even before COVID. Um, we've been all very socially distant by standard. And ultimate safaris, even before COVID, always preferred working with small and personal lodges is still very much what we believe in, um, including our own camps, which are capped at six rooms max. So it's about personal and small. And I know a lot of travelers now looking for that, getting away. We've never booked mass tourism lodges. We will never. Um, and another thing, of course, a lot of people asking you know, private excursions, private dining. The days are over where you want to do family dining among strangers or you know, um, so again there's something we've been very well um, in, in, experienced with was the private experiences for guests and then maybe a guaranteed remote i mean we don't really have cityscapes and um, city holiday destinations it's really about been to getting in and out but it really is about away from people the city civilization and this webinar especially is dedicated to sleeping under the stars. Um, Namibia is the only African country that is actually has a dark sky reserve. Um, and every camp that Ultimate has worked with and the camps that we are dedicated to here include any and every opportunity to sleep under the Milky Way. Um, even in a rainy season, we guarantee sunny, clear skies. And then the evening skies are spectacular. Uh, it's just, um, you know, right now it's even more special. We don't have light pollution. And of course, sleeping in the stars is more easy facilitated in Namibia because we don't necessarily have the friendly neighborhood lion next door to you. So it's, it gives much more opportunity to get over your cabin fever. For all those many people that had to work from home, school from home, can't go anywhere. Um, this is the antidote to all of that. And another thing very important to a lot of people, they forget that Namibia has actually been open for tourism since October 2020. So it's been, we've been operational, lodges are open. We have got all the health and safety protocols in place. You know, people always ask, what if I get positive? What about quarantine? And um, what if I get sick? And um, we've got this comprehensive protocol manual where we answer all these questions that you guests may have. This is tried and trusted operational things. We have been very fortunate. We had less than a handful of guests ever test positive on safari in Namibia. No one's ever gotten terribly ill. 
So mostly you had to deal with isolation, get retested, fly them home. And so everything is in place. A lot of people are scared going, oh, what if I travel all the way to Africa and then I'm stranded and I can't get home. Um, most people, authorities try to get people back home rather than keep them indefinitely on this safari here. So another reassurance that, you know, everything has been put in place to assure your clients health and safety as much as we can control it. Everybody in Ultimate Safari is 100% vaccinated as well as boosted. We've all had our booster shots a couple of weeks ago, well, now a couple of months ago already. Um, so again, on the tourism side, it's been very much implemented. Um, Namibia as a country, percentage wise, we're still lagging behind just over 30% of the general population. Um, it's a trend that you, most of you are aware is, happens in most of Africa, except Botswana, there are a bit of the shining stars there. But again, to be aware that your guests will never interact with the general population and everywhere they go in the lodges you know, the safety is assured um, and the responsibility is really put on people to do what they can to protect the safety of the travelers as well as the guests. Um, a lot of you know Ultimate Safari, so I won't go into detail why, um, but we're still standing here after two years, I think stronger than ever. We've been able to retain our entire star sales team, all our signature guides, um, we've also all made terribly financial sacrifices, as you guys know, in Africa, no government gave any check or bailout or support or furlough. We we're all on it by ourselves, conservation especially, and ultimate safaris. And I'll share that with Ted afterwards. Um, one of our highlights was the conservation chronicles, COVID chronicles, and being out in the field and see the daily conservation principles, projects, conservation research that's happening while the rest of the world is being put on pause, some things cannot be put on pause and that's an ongoing project. So um, that is actually being probably our greatest achievement is that despite you know, very few tour travelers coming through, we were able to maintain conservation and research projects and they didn't have to suffer. And that's thanks to partners, Namibian entrepreneurs, Namibian businesses, um, as well as repeat guests um, and then trade partners like yourself who just helped us in any way possible. A little reminder, these cruises, I am always get very excited about Ultimate Safari's cruises. We are all about road trips. Namibia is wonderful to explain by roads, one of the few African countries where you can do it. Um, we always remind people that we are 51 times bigger than Okavango Delta, so traveling distances are way vaster. I mean, Botswana area-wise, it's about the same as Namibia, but the actual areas visited on a holiday are quite a bit different. Um, so our cruises continue to be developed, um, six seats in the back, one in the front. Road safaris are truly the way to get you know, into the heart of a country, we believe, with our ultimate guides, all our star signature guides, really opening up the destination. The trip that we are doing with Tad in a few weeks' time will also be hosted in this vehicle with one of our top signature guides. Um, the movie is about the storytelling. Our guides exceptional storytellers and we're not talking the entertainer and the clown we're talking the naturalist guide the immersive behind the scenes the cultural interaction finding that elephant that you know it's and as and many of you know namibia we don't drive off road searching for the wildlife so it's about keen trekking skills and a lot of luck but then also flying safaris it's a question that comes up a lot so we want to just readdress it at the moment, beyond the wilderness air seat rates, there are next to no seat rates possible in Namibia. Scenic Air does a daily taxi from Windhoek to Sossus Flames back. That's it. There's a new airline called Fly Namibia that have opened some limited routes that fly Windhoek to Sestri, Sestri to Swakop, Swakop to Twelfth Fontein, Twelfth Fontein Gaba and Windhoek. It's an amazingly affordable route. There are some concerns we have just in terms of flexibility um, that consider this like an airline, which means if you book, you have to pay immediately to secure your seat. Luggage restrictions are only 18 kilograms in soft bags, including hand luggage on these air transfers. But biggest concern is they land at Sestream Airstrip and you have to arrange different road transfers. So if you guess they're crazy, they have another two hour, hour and a half road transfer to face um, from that airstrip to the lodge because they don't do individual drop-offs. Um, but our team is always there to guide you um, on what is the best way to get around the country. And despite the assumption, private charters are actually extremely reasonably priced, especially when you're three or four passengers onwards. So the seat rates would probably cater to the one person. We do get a lot of solo travelers, um, but our team is 
there to guide you to customize each trip to fit the best price for your guests. So we want to reassure people that just because we don't have an extensive seat rate um, option like they have in Botswana, it doesn't mean that now flying is inaccessible um, our vast distances, of course. In Botswana, is transfers 15 minutes, 40 minutes would be a long flight. Namibia, your shortest flight is an hour, average two to three hours get from A to B. Um, so these are just options to remember by. Um, these are via transporter vehicles, just to give people again um, reassurance that all our airport transfers in this transporter are exclusive and private. We don't do shuttle drops off and pickups. So when your guests are met at the Ventuk airport, they don't have to endure various tell drop offs with their terms. Um, so again, it comes down to the exclusivity and service. Now, usually you should save the best for last, but we are so freaking excited. I'm um, sorry, I'm just going to skip for this. And I'm going straight to the best part of Namibia, which is the northwest of Namibia. Yes, we are biased. The movie has a lot of amazing highlights and tourist attractions and destinations. Um, but, you know, if anyone's asked me what's my favorite place, my sole place, uh, that I'm not alone. It's pretty much the entire ultimate team. It's the northwest of Namibia, home to rocky gravel, desert plains and rocky mountains and um, river systems that are oasis in this desert and cultural interactions and getting away from it all and there's a depth of life that sort of um, in this unfenced area roaming vast, vast landscapes and somewhat with communities successful community involvement you know it's got everything that we feel really close to um, and most importantly it's unfenced it's outside parks it's still one of the lesser visited areas in Namibia um, so it's a bit of a hidden gem um, certainly over the last few years, more and more lodges open, but it's always been the kind of place where you can't send buses to. If you can't send buses there, then we are happy. Um, so the Dumra Land Office of Namibia is home to desert adapted elephants, desert adapted rhino, black rhino. Um, cultural interaction is really these, you know, this is the landscape where your elephants are dwarfed. And, and you might just even be driving past an elephant not realizing it because in these Salvadora bushes in the river systems, they hide so well. It's unbelievable how an elephant can hide in the desert. And that's why I'm saying I go straight to the best. Um, we are very excited about Unduli Ridge. Opened officially last year, middle of 2021. And we've been successfully hosting guests since then. The reviews have been amazing. As always, we threw everything that Ultimate is known for, which is all about the people, exceptional guiding, exceptional staff, and intuitive service. Um, it's only six suites. We can offer that personalized service that we always care about. You actually see the Brunt book in the distance, and it's about half an hour from Treyfontaine, um, but on the on a private conservancy with the Doronaus community. Um, and for those that want to know, it's quite a distance from Doronaus. The Doronaus Conservancy is one of the larger conservancies in the area. We traverse our own areas looking for elephant and, and visiting Treyfontaine Fontaine as well, doing a lot of activities, which I'll get into. Um, but you'll see very quickly the trend, the options to sleep outside. Um, this is a luxury suite, of course, but any opportunity to roll your bed under the deck and sleep under the Milky Way, we afford this for our guests. It's so very, very important to us. Um, so these are the bedrooms. You get a feel for the bedrooms here. A lot of guests ask, oh, it's very open. Um, is that safe? Now there are shutters, which we, of course, open up for photographic effect but the shutters can close down, especially during the day. All the suites have this evening breeze, air conditioning gently blowing over your bedroom. And it's all about, again, the great outdoors, the fresh air, um, but you can close the shutters yourself. At night, usually for guests, the first night, they're quite happy to be in the suite and then they get a bit more ambitious the second night and say, please roll out the bed onto the deck and we'll sleep under the stars. This camp has been exclusively 100% built by Namibian artisans and architects and designers. We're talking Namibian marble. Everything was built and constructed using local as much as possible. We do believe that as a sustainable company, you have to use local as much as possible to reduce your carbon footprint from printing expensive things or ship shipping things from overseas. Um, on switch showers. Unduli means giraffe, and this camp is dedicated to the giraffe conservation. Ultimate Safari has always worked very closely with Julian and Stephanie Fennessy of the Giraffe Conservation Travel Fund. Travel Fund. Um, we've actually had giraffe released in the area as part of our extensive conservation and research project. We do actually an afternoon activity where we do an immersive 
um, giraffe conservation drive. It doesn't mean you see the giraffe, but guests learn more about the research. Challenges of radio coloring a giraffe. You have no idea how many places they've tried it on different parts of the giraffe. And yes, no, the neck definitely didn't work out. Um, but you know, there are lots of these things that guests can really learn, track the giraffe, um, things like that. We do, of course, to all our favorite uh, megafauna in the area, elephant, rhino. Um, but the draft has become a bit of a, a hidden hint hit, especially considering the silent extinction of these amazing animals in the rest of Africa. We've got a very cool rock pool. We have a butler whose main purpose, its sole purpose, is to cater to guests, bring them their drinks. Um, we have gorgeous little, a little lounge and reception area, but very few guests take advantage of it. Uh, they love the room so much that rather just linger longer in their rooms, which are fully catered with mini bar charging facilities, even a phone to phone the butler. It doesn't dial out, it's just for internal use. Um, even by Swarovski binoculars in the rooms to create that kind of ambiance that you know you should enjoy your room more. I think sometimes we're so busy going and doing everything, we don't spend enough time in our beautiful suites. We have a boma, which is where we do our pizza night, the Damara pizza night, gourmet pizzas. Um, which is a great hit because most Boma nights are your traditional barbecue event. And we decided to just do it a little bit different because no matter where in the world you are, pizza is always a hit, um, especially though it's a Namibian twisted pizza. Um, I spoke a little bit about the activities. So yes, um, we look for desert adapted elephants in the Huap and Upper Huap rivers. Um, on a longer stay, three nights of more, we drive all the way to the Huap Conservancy and do rhino trekking there. Uh, it's included in the stay if guests are interested in it, but it does involve quite a lot of driving until we meet with the rhino rangers and then only walk. Um, so if a lot of you will know that traveling in Namibia does require a lot in the vehicle, so it can be quite exhausting. So the rhino trekking is offered on request if guests are in interested in it on a longer stay. It would be included, but we don't offer it on a two night stay. It's just too much traveling to find the rhinos. Um, but yeah, the giraffe conservation and then the latest excitement is AJ, the leopard. We've already called it a leopard in the area. It's part of also an ongoing leopard research program. It's been very fascinating. Namibian leopards are terribly shy. We have extremely healthy population of leopards, but you very rarely see them. And it was quite astonishing to see how close these leopards come to community villages, to the camp itself. Um, spotting is extremely rare. We came across the Herkill ones. We came across the scat ones. Guess get excited just knowing about that. But it certainly is quite fascinating to know she's watching you, even though you will never see her. Um, but she keeps a discreet distance from the communities, from the crowds, from the people. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to call her more. As many of you know, a radio call is quite an expensive thing. So getting research and donation in place it requires usually donor money to start with. Um, and then other things that we do at Onduli, we've got this cool little cruises so where you can sit on top. Yes, we like to burn our travelers to a crisp. Um, these things are always a great hit to sit on top of the cruiser until the Namibian sun comes out. Um, but yeah, it's been a great vantage point. We offer e-bikes. We have this beautiful mountain bike trail. It's not one of those technical trails, but it's a beautiful scenic drive and e-bikes, guided walks. Again, plenty of opportunities to get out, celebrate the outdoors. And yes, we do visit the trail for Fontaine Rock and Grape. Then from one side of the world or Namibia to the other side and the Namib Desert. Now, Sosa's Flay continues to be one of our biggest tourist attractions. It is the oldest desert in the world with the highest freestanding dunes in the world, has been featured in many movies. And it's certainly a very, very special attraction, even though it is one of your more touristy places, it still never features to the mass tourism of other places, you know, especially in Europe or anything like that. Um, and we, until recently, had a exclusive camp, mobile camp set up. And the emphasis of this camp was very much to cater to our small groups, guided trips, um, and was only open on request. However, it wasn't a typical mobile camp because the weather is quite harsh there, so you can't just pitch a tent. You need to build a bit more permanent structures to protect it from the sun and the west wind. And before you know it, you had a proper tent camp, and it's definitely not a mobile camp anymore. So we had this beautiful camp fully developed and we don't have enough travelers coming through because of course you can't just depend on the odd groups coming through from ultimate safaris. So we decided to open it as we do for Dooley Ridge on a normal bed night basis as from 1st of April. Um, camp Saucers is open, six rooms as well, um, not exclusive bases anymore for our travelers coming in. 
And as always, what do I go on about? The sleeping outdoors. Um, each of the tents has a star bed and the star bed has actually multiple purposes. I'll show you the reason why. These are our tents, these are our rooms. You can see the classic mirror tents. We come with ensuite bathrooms. They do come with bucket showers, so it still has the legacy of a mobile camp with flush toilets. Um, the picture on the bottom right is a little outdated. The bathrooms have roofs now, and it started because it's very hot during the day there. And for many of you appreciate that in the desert, it gets very cold at night. So you are an open bathroom in the freezing cold. No matter how hot your shower is, you do wish for a little bit more wind protection. So we built the roof and on top of that, we built the star bed. So it was dual use. Um, so all your tents have the star bed now. Um, as you can see from the camp, it doesn't look at all like your typical mobile tent camp experience anymore. It is quite, um, quite permanent. We have what we call plastum, these, these, these round dams that used to be for the farmers and we converted a few of them into these gorgeous pools. Um, they're not at the camp itself. We do a bit of a scenic drive to get through them. From outside, they look like these dilapidated round little dams. You climb on the stairs and there's this beautiful crystal clear pool all ready for you um, and put together. Uh, we have a cool box there where we present people with beers and ice creams and things like that. Um, and I just wanted to also emphasize on children policies. Fonduli Ridge does take kids of all ages. Important to note, we don't have a family unit per se at Fonduli Ridge, but we put a third bed in it. Um, as with most premium camps in Namibia or in Africa, usually when you have kids under 12, you must book and pay for a private vehicle. Um, but otherwise, Fonduli Ridge takes kids of all ages. Naturally, you're always a little bit ah, two-year-olds. It's never always ideal. You know, um, it's rocky boulders, there are high balconies in Unduli. The parents have to be wake up. I know the little toddlers, once they start walking, they're like little Ferraris. Before you know it, they're all over the edge. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we've really tried to create a family-friendly environment, especially for the older kids. Um, camp sauces at this stage, however, doesn't take kids under 12, unless you book it on exclusive use. And the reason why this is, is that when we first built this camp, it was very much an intention that it was always going to be built and booked on an intimate, exclusive use experience. Um, however, when we opened up now on Dooley Ridge, we realized because this has family dining, it is more small and intimate. Um, you know, Camp on Dooley will have separate dining. There's much more opportunities to separate and give each person a space. Camp Sauces isn't built like that. So at the moment, no kids under 12, kids over 12 are very welcome, unless you book exclusive use. Another thing to be aware of, though, the tents are comfortable for two adults, but too small to put a third bed in. We have once experimented by putting a little dome tent on the veranda for kids, but that rest has been blown so much. And the last thing we want is have little kiddies blown away in a little tent across the Namib desert. Um, so that at the moment is not the best children friendly camp. But for elderly guests, from our kids from 12 onwards, um, it's, it's a great destination. We even do surprise ice cream stop at the pool. And for those that kids know that as long as you have a pool, your kids are really happy. Um, now, Camps, this is built on a private nature reserve called Namibsaris Reserve. Um, Sven Bachlan, as well as many um, private farm owners in the area, have all come together and removed fences across the desert. This includes the wilderness reserves, the number of branch reserves. Um, it's been really a big part of what makes the number of area and that area very special. This used to be all sheep farming, heracle and, and goat farming. And you know, it's been, of course, very destructive to the desert environment. But most importantly, Namibia's desert adapted wildlife thrives because they can roam and migrate across vast areas in search of water and grazing. When you start cutting off the pathways with fences, you need to start building water troughs for them, start feeding them because the area isn't big enough for them to sustain themselves. So there's a big push and it's happening more and more successfully. Sometimes the drought is a good idea because the drought means farming, traditional farming and sheep is not viable anymore. And then they sell the farms cheaply to private farm owners who want to convert it into nature reserves. So Namitaros is one of them. We've got a very beautiful, healthy population of antelope, including kudu, oryx, springbok, um, giraffe, yes, giraffe as well there, um, spotted hyenas, um, leopard are in the area as well. Um, as always, you don't see them. It's very, very shy, bet yet foxes. Um, and the intention is in time to also release rhinos that used to be in this area on a plateau 
not in this area specifically, but on the plateau, and really rehabilitate that area um, to become a desert retreat. And the whole point of Camp Sossus was that as much as we love going to Sossus Lane, it's fun and awesome going there, it's still very much a main tourist destination. And we always believe that the desert is a place where you go in tranquility, get away from people, space, quietness. You know, when it's so quiet, it hurts your ears. And that's why we always offer Namitsaris um, the option. We, of course, go to Sosfle, and then the afternoons or guest stay longer. It really is an immersive desert retreat experience, guided walks. Here you can go mountain biking. This is no e-bikes in Sosfle, uh, not the area. So e Onduli has the e-bikes. Camp Sosfle has the mountain bikes. Beautiful trails, various trails. Again, you know, you don't have to be technical, single trail person to enjoy, enjoy it. The Jeep treks as well as single trails. Um, guided trips. Um, we do the sundown at gin stop spots. So Namibia until recently was very well known for the beer. Now we also known for artisan gin. Um, our wine still comes from South Africa, but the gin is very much um, locally produced. So we do a Namibian artisan gin tasting. We call it the resurrection bush gin tasting experience next to a quiver tree. Um, and really just give guests that space of enjoying the desert more. So these are the two camps that are, or Ultimate Safaris has now officially launched um, to, to the general public, if you want to put it like that. As always, we only deal with trade direct, um, not direct, um, but it's now been open for self-drive guests, flying guests, sharing guided guests. It's not exclusive anymore, only for those that book the safari with us. Um, and most importantly, not just exclusive to guided safaris, but also flying and self-drive guests. Um, both our camps are only available on FI basis. As my as our camps are, we always believe that what you take back with you is the experiences. And, and Namibia always has a legacy of being DBB only and everybody self-drives, which is great fun. But the memories are always made from the experiences that often the local guides are able. Now, a lot has happened in Namibia, a lot, so I can't always cover it all. But I'll tell you some of my favorite new highlights um, is that while, you know, the rest of the world, the world was on pause and you think not much is happening in Africa, things are actually bubbling. And one of them is uh, the Dream Cruiser in the Toshva National Park. So Toshva National Park is the uh, most popular wildlife destination in Namibia. It is a place where you can have extremely wonderful, diverse wildlife sightings. Um, it's all about being patient, sitting at the waterhole and, and hope for some exciting wildlife encounters. If you are fortunate, you will have them. Um, rainy season be more tricky, but then again, look at this um, lion um, trying to attempt to grab himself a zebra in the rainy season. Um, so Tosha has always been a very much an attraction about game viewing. Now, Nguma collection is always try to think outside the box. They know people go to Tosha for the wildlife views. It's awesome. And everybody spends every day going to the park. Um, but they came up with what they themselves call, and I apologize if I swear and offend somebody, but I'm just literally saying what Unguma called it, batshit crazy idea, the Unguma Dream Cruiser. Um, it's basically a converted cru land cruiser um, for guests that stay at Unguma at any of their four properties. Um, the first night they usually stay at the Unguma Lodge, the second night after they usually do a nice afternoon game drive, they're taken to the Green Dream Cruiser. It's open only for two guests. It's a very romantic getaway. Um, so they'll have beautiful sundowners. They'll have alfresco dining set up for them. Um, and then the guide retreats at a very discreet distance. He is contactable by radio, but otherwise he's not around. And you have the most magnificent private sundowners over this play and see whatever wildlife comes through. You have this bedroom with the most amazing views. It's got a shower, ensuite toilet. Yes, it's got everything set up for you. Um, and it's one of it's the only, you know, I guess it's not a tree house because Namibia doesn't have enough trees to offer tree houses. So if you don't have enough trees or not enough big trees, what do you do? You build a Land Cruiser tree house. Um, and this has been a great success. It comes as a surcharge. We do recommend people booking it in advance to avoid disappointment, but now in a low season, often guests would book it direct. Some people go, oh, that looks a bit scary, isn't it? Dangerous, especially because Nguma has lines on the reserve. But of course, it's been all prepared and built with the utmost safety um, on everybody's mind. Nguma also got a rhino po po um, population and thing, um, and they have an anti-poaching unit on site there. But we are very excited 
um, about your first dream cruise in Namibia. Another thing I'm bringing up, it's not new, but it comes up a lot, is Skeleton Coast, the Shipwreck Lodge. It's becoming one of the star performers in Namibia, so I thought I'll just give it a special little shout out. Um, and most importantly, just manage expectations in the Skeleton Coast. A lot of people, so I'm just going to have some tea. A lot of people ask, you know, how does it work in terms of what do you see? And we always remind people, if you look at the picture here, yes, lots of shipwrecks on the coast, but the very conditions that cause these ships to wreck are the very conditions that make them disappear over time. So you don't actually see any major shipwrecks at Shipwreck Lodge, despite the name. Um, but we always say the shipwrecks are long gone, but the stories linger. Uh, what you do experience there, small seal colonies driving over endless desert terrain, um, have uh, a lunch at the clay castles, walk up and down the shifting dunes, they call them the roaring dunes as well. So if you drive down some of the dunes, they roar, they sound like a bomber, and they do beach dinners, um, ATV quad biking and lie down sandboarding. And the wrecks you see along the way are often relics of failed prospecting and mining attempts. And this is actually part of the Ventura bomber, um, which was part of the rescue attempt of the Dunedin Star, which tried to then land on the beach and then got stuck. Um, it's quite a fascinating story. If I go into detail there, we can spend another hour on it. Um, so again, we just want to manage expectation on Skeleton Coast. The lodge itself it's only what, a little bit more of a kilometer from the beach. You actually hear the ocean there. Um, Namibia doesn't have the traditional beach resorts like Zanzibar, for example. It's cold most of the time, cold weather, stormy oceans. Um, but it really does give you that feeling of the desolate coast experience. Sometimes, not always, really, but it does happen. There have been desert lions in the area, um, as well as desert elephant. When that happens, we get excited, so social media explodes, and then suddenly everybody tells us they want to see the lions on the beach, and we go, whoa, stand by. That was exception. That's why I made the social media. We cannot guarantee desert lions in the, on, on your visit. Um, they happen every once in the blue moon, literally. But it's, you know, again, just shows you what a wild and special experience the shipwreck lodge is. And then the latest addition that I want to talk about is the Habitas. Now, this is a very unusual product. We stayed there a few weeks ago. Um, the owners of the lodge have never built or opened a lodge in Africa before. Um, so it was certainly a steep learning curve to not just only open Africa, but choose Mibia for it. Um, what makes this also a little bit different to your typical um, safari lodge is that it really is the emphasis on holistic. Um, the owners built the lodge with the intention to have guests stay there for a week or two, um, not realizing that in Namibia you don't stay a week in one place and do day trips to Sossesway, day trips to Tosha. Um, so it was a bit like, okay, we need to rethink this through, but they have a very fixed daily schedule. So Mondays you do this, Tuesdays you do this, right? Wednesdays you do this. Um, it uh, has a lot of emphasis on wellness, yoga, meditation, um, conscious walking. They also do a lot of cultural interactions in terms of the Bushman walk, just talks, you know, um, interpretive walk of the bush and you know, what I live on. Um, the, the, the villas themselves are gorgeous views over the Namibian bush belt and things like that. Um, uh, Ellie Hunt, who represents them, is very well known in South Africa. We actually stayed with her. Um, they've been very receptive to some of the advice we give them, especially since no one in comes all the way to Namibia to stay a whole week or two in the same lodge when we've got this amazing desert landscapes to explore. Um, so a lot of people ask us, you know, what is it like? Um, the food was exceptionally good. Um, they also do wellness spa centers. So it works great at the end of a trip when guests are especially a bit tired already. They've done every game drive out there. And they actually don't want to spend yet another day in the game drive vehicle. So if they don't want to do the yoga, it's fine. They can sleep in. It's a very relaxed environment. They still offer things like sundown drives and warm up dinners and things like that. And um, so it's, it's, it, it, it works really well. I mean, the movie has always been not about the bush game viewing destination, about getting out to the desert. Um, but Habitat was actually um, quite a good addition. We believe that in Namibia, the more you have a different type of product, even though you know, for many of us, it's not the traditional safari product that we are used to. There's certainly a trend towards moving more towards these kind of pr products where the holistic wellness is more important than the actual safari experience. 
Um, they don't have a lot of game on there. Yeah, they had some wildebeest and um, springbok we saw and giraffe. Um, it's not your major game destination. It's not like your South African private reserves where you know your game is exceptional. But it certainly is a nice space to end your Nam Namibian safaris and go, ah, oh, okay, now I'd like a proper massage and sleep in for once and not yet again wake up before sunrise to do yet another four day on the game drive. And this is a bit of a snapshot and summary of all the things that happening in Namibia. Um, I always want to leave space for questions and answers and any questions you have, specifics you want me to bring up. Um, I also want to share just now a video of Camp Saucers um, because it's so new and launched, we want to share that as well. But I first want to just open myself up to any questions. You get uh, a wonderful snapshot into all the exciting new stuff happening. Uh, I have a question uh, about Habitas and how you with just the location and, and how you in, would yeah. integrate it into an itinerary in Namibia. Yeah, it's, it's about 40 minutes from the Windhoek Airport, about an hour, you know, not even. Um, so it's traditional Bushveld experience. Um, you know, it, we felt it was best towards the end rather than the beginning, because when guests come on safari, they're just so excited, they want to just do everything and not miss out on activities. Um, and while the guiding was good at Habitas, um, you know, we felt also there's a lot, of, especially when you have a day where they just do morning yoga. Now, if your guests just arrive in Africa and they don't do yoga, and then suddenly there is, but I can't do a game drive vehicle because today is Tuesday and Tuesday mornings is yoga. They might feel disgruntled and go, what did I just come for? So, but towards the end, when people are more happy to relax and it's not far from the airport, you can do PTR testing and antigen testing at Habitas as well. Um, they facilitate that. Um, and they do nice walking trails. So it's a really nice way to end your Namibian safari. Um, the accommodation, the food was good. And what I really liked, which was different, is they do tea tasting. Um, and they use all this Namibian and Southern African different teas, the Buku teas, the, um, the rooibos, but also a lot of hoodie, um, the hoodia tea, the devil's claw, which is a Namibian on. So that was really interesting. Um, um, and yeah, so there are a lot of good things to end with. Um, you mentioned PCR testing, which just makes me think of um, the potential of testing being waived at some point, as Botswana has done, and rumors in South Africa that it may happen at some point. Any, uh, any good news or any insights, or are we still looking at 72 hours prior? Uh, um, we're looking at that for now, um, and I think the problem is because the rest of the general public, is, there's been a very low, unfortunate vaccine, vaccine take up, you know. Um, We've just been spared the worst, you know, and Namibia has never had a major outbreak and that never scares people into getting vaccinated. You know, tourism people got vaccinated because our livelihoods depended on it too. Um, and Botswana has a very good high vaccination rate. So at this stage, um, not yet in terms of the PCR test. We are, however, petitioning with the government. We're actually hoping that South Africa leads the way. Um, if South Africa leads the way, because right now the big challenge is the transit as well. A lot of our American travelers, of course, come via South Africa first. So even if it's away, taken away in Namibia, because they're transit via South Africa, they're stuck with that um, PCR test requirement anyway. And then you're running out of time. Um, the biggest stress, of course, was the 72 hours from the time the test was taken, um, which we are still trying to argue and fight. And there's sometimes just a bit of a language barrier to understand and appreciate the challenges. Um, having said that, they do have a PCR testing facility at the airport. Um, so if guest test has expired, they'll have them retest right there. Um, if your guests are negative before they travel, it's very likely they're going to be negative by the time they arrive. Um, and they just wait at the airport for the, until the results are out. Um, uh, anybody who's worried about quarantine, we use Nankusa for quarantine, even if it's for a few hours. Beautiful lodge just outside of town. In terms of, you know, it's in the wilderness, so you guests are not stuck in some city or hotel waiting their results. Um, but not a single guest of ours has yet been turned away um, or denied entry into the country because their test is out by an hour. Um, biggest challenge is actually the airlines. They might decide, I won't let you board because your test might not be valid by the time you land in Bento, rather than the Namibian authorities denying entry. Gotcha, okay. Um, well, fingers crossed we see South Africa lead the way on, on that. Um, it'll certainly, oh, I think open things up even further. 
Yeah, thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, because all Namibians that are vaccinated don't need to get the PCR test. So if you're uh, okay. Namibian and you're vaccinated, you don't need to get tested. So the first step is there already. Right. And we tend to follow what South Africa does, um, but that's okay. hope. Uh, what are the current flight options from the U.S.? Um, there's some new ones and rumors of Qatar starting direct flights again later this year. So, what uh, what's the you know typical current routing that you're seeing for most of your guests? You mentioned South Africa, which I'm sure through Joburg or Cape Town, but uh, maybe mention some of the new flight uh, the new options via Frankfurt and Qatar. Yeah. So, I mean, um, Lufthansa Eurowings has shown place pretty much every day or close to every day from Frankfurt direct to Vinto. Um, has been a great connection for us, very reliable, very supportive, even when the rest of the world put the countries in lockdown, they've been very supportive for opening air access. Um, for a lot of our North American travelers, it means a bit of a longer transit wait at Frankfurt Airport. Um, but, you know, otherwise the airline's been amazingly um, and reliable and they also upgrading the aircraft to fly the bigger ones to Namibia as well. Um, then Ethiopian has been probably the super spy star in Africa, connecting Africa and no one else would, um, reliable, efficient. Um, and so they've been great adders to Ventuk Direct, regular flights as well. Um, then Qatar has stopped all operations when just when COVID hit. We actually gave up hope. And then a few weeks ago, we heard that Qatar is looking at reinstating it by July. Um, they actually met with the Namibian president, can you believe it? So um, there's every intention to open up the Doha to Vento route again, which has been you know, great news. So we look forward to that. Their office never closed in Vento, so that's good news. Um, and then Airlink has connected Vento, Joburg and Joburg Cape Town consistently, regularly, regular flights a day. Um, they have been absolute superstars as well. Airlink has absolutely been the most reliable airline we've ever worked with. Um, yeah, so good, good, good on them. And then there's a new company called Fly Namibia, the same company that's trying to open seat rates within Namibia. They're offering flights out of Cape Town to Ventuk. Um, they're also starting up with that. And then there are also flights going from Johannesburg to Walfus Bay, which is south of Swakopmund. So, you know, given the access, we're still missing a few airlines. You know, there was a time when we had seven different airlines flying direct to Namibia. We've got a spiffing new airport. The one good thing that came out of COVID is that, you know, flights were not as big, so we could finish construction and building faster, better. So more streamlined customs, more streamlined check-in. Um, we're not there yet. They still have to build nice restaurants and stuff, but the logistics side is, is, is near, near completion. So... Um, we are ready to bring all the airlines back. Thank goodness for Airlink. They deserve a big round of applause uh, for sure. Yeah. Keeping Southern Africa connected during this the, this past year and bailing out people uh, that were booked through SAA. And anyway, we love Airlink. Um, but yeah, great to see some additional connections. As you say, Maynard, great to have that direct flight from Frankfurt, especially for European clients. As you mentioned, Birgit, is a bit of a long connection, I think, for North Americans, um, but uh, but doable. And yeah, you know, at this point, Johannesburg and and uh, Cape Town are probably the most, you know, the the gateways that most are using. Um, and then, fingers crossed, we see Qatar make that confirm that direct flight in from from Doha in the coming months. Uh, Maynard, you asked another great question um, that uh, regarding the the, the sequencing of an itinerary in Namibia, whether you start with the desert or start with the game viewing. Um, and this is something that, that Ultimate has been, has been kind of um, pioneering, I think, in this space for, for a number of years, which is that we believe primarily for North Americans that it is ideal, and all of this is dependent these days, especially on space, of course, but ideally, if you can start with the game viewing experiences, if you're gonna see it, go to Atosha or go to Okanjima, which is a, a reserve just north of Vintook that has um, re does rehabilitation for for big cats, especially cheetah and leopard. Um, go and see those uh, those the big cats you're going to see at Okanjima or up in Atosha. You're going to see lots of game in Atosha as well, and kind of check your, your your typical game viewing boxes because Americans tend to really be twitchy about that. They've got their game list and they want to see the big game first, um, and then continue on from more traditional game viewing in Atosha 
onto Damar land, which is where you have all these amazing desert adapted species. Um, and of course the incredible landscapes, some of these incredible lodges as Birgit showed today with Unduli Ridge, Shipwreck. And there it's more about the journey to see these, these very unique desert ad adapted species, um, the incredible landscapes and the stories of conservation and the community conservancies that are in, in Damar land and, and the Kuneni region and the Skeleton Coast which really for me, and I think Birgit would agree, that's really the heart of, of Namibia and of uh, Namibia Safari that makes it so unique and special are those, um, is that time spent in Damara land. Uh, and then finishing with Sosa's Flay at the end um, where you can have some of your best sundowners in Africa, of course, seeing the dunes. Um, but for Americans starting with Sosa's Flay, sometimes they don't uh, fully appreciate it um, because again, they're looking for big cats and and elephants and big game, which is not what you find in Sosa's play. Um, it's, it, uh, it is more about, again, the landscapes and, and the, as you put it, Birgit, the, uh, the desert's so quiet that it hurts your ears. And uh, we find that putting that at the end after the big game has been seen at the beginning kind of works really well for, especially for North Americans who, uh, again, who are, are trying to tick those boxes. So that would be how we would generally propose to do it. But at the end of the day, um, right now, especially for this year, and I'm sure next, uh, it, it often does come down to what's available and, and how to best route it. So, uh, but that's a great question. Anything you wanna add, Birgit, or anything I've uh, butchered as far as, uh, as philosophy of designing a, a Namibia itinerary? That's exactly perfect. And I think the other thing also, you know, again, we, we forget that our North American travelers are coming on a two day journey to reach us. They're absolutely jet lagged. We send them to Sosa's Flay saying, okay, you've got to wake up before four o'clock the next morning to see the dunes and you've got to do this. And they're going absolutely like, what the hell of the week is it? Whereas, you know, your game rides tend to ease into the destination a bit. You sit in the car, you putt along, you see the animals, you know. But we're not making you run up on your dune on the second day in Namibia when you're still trying to recover from your jet lag. Um, so again, it's, it's exactly, you know, you're winding down towards the end, I think especially before any safari, I know I'm the same. And looking for your passport, make sure your work's up to done. You are so high on adrenaline. By the time you arrive in Africa, you are absolutely jaded. So let's do the game being first, you know, then you're still like a little bit buzzed and, and, and then you can accept that. Oh, wait, I am on holiday now. I did not forget to pack my passport. Perfect, good. Uh, I think that's all the questions we have. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll send a follow-up with a link to this recording uh, as well as uh, as well as some some rates for Unduli. There was a few questions about rates, Birgit, for Unduli and Kim Sosis. Mm -hmm. We'll send through the uh, the links to the PDFs with the rack rates. Um, we have an amazing deal for 2022, so no reason to come for what is one of the premium products in Namibia. So you, you want to send your guests now. <laughs> Another reason to, to send your guests now, absolutely. So thanks everyone for joining today. Um, we hope you have a great rest of your day. And if anybody is interested in, in a last minute trip to Namibia, um, we do have one final spot on our fam trip, which leaves on March 22nd. So um, contact me if, uh, if you could somehow swing a, a last minute trip. Um, hope you all are well and uh, thanks for your time today. Birgit, great to see you as always. And uh, thanks for an amazing presentation. Always a pleasure. Eh? Thank you for everybody's time as well. Always, always love talking about Namibia. Cheers, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah.